gonna be here with us. Hello guys, it's me Flora and also my dog is here, Mia, who is gonna be distracting us all the way through. Before we get into this week's video, I just wanted to say a disclaimer. This is not medical advice, this is my research that I'm just sharing and hopefully this will be helpful, but get a blood work done if you're experiencing any symptoms and talk to a medical professional to get help. When we follow a plant-based diet, there are a few nutrients that we have to pay more attention to, one of which is iron. A poorly designed plant-based diet or, well, any kind of diet can predispose us to have deficiencies and we really want to avoid these and stay strong and energized. Iron is one of the most common deficiencies worldwide. It is not only affecting individuals who are plant-based but also the general population. But with mindful consumption and a few tricks we can make sure to optimize our iron levels to avoid any deficiencies. So let's start with the basics. Why do we actually need iron? Iron is essential for our bodies to transport oxygen through our bloodstream, to cells, tissues, which is really important for energy production and our overall physiology. It also plays an important role in our immune system, DNA synthesis, cognitive function and the production of neurotransmitters and hormones. So how much iron do we actually need? Well, it depends on our gender and age. The general recommendation for men over 19 years old is around 9 milligrams per day, while for women over the age of 19 in their reproductive age, so pre-menopause, they require around 15 to 18 milligrams per day. So there are essentially two types of iron. The heme iron, which is found in animal products, and this is more bioavailable, so our body is more able to absorb it. And the non-heme iron, which is found in plants, and these are less bioavailable. It has been suggested that for people who follow a plant-based diet, this number has to be increased by 80%, which is a lot. It would be around 33 milligrams for women in reproductive age, which is a pretty large number. It's not impossible to reach. But luckily, researchers have done their job for us and they found a few simple tricks that we can use to increase bioavailability of plant-based iron. But before I get into these tips, just remember that these recommendations are for the general population, it's not for individuals, so don't take this number strictly, just a general guideline. And you don't need to be perfect every day. So luckily there are many plant-based iron sources available, for example, cooked green leafy vegetables like spinach or kale, beans, peas, lentils, oats, chia seed, cashew nuts or pumpkin seeds, as well as seaweed like spirulina. But I also put together a more comprehensive list for you. It's down in the description box. You can download a free PDF to help you iron up your meals. So to make the most out of our iron intake and the absorption rate, there are a few tips, as I mentioned earlier, that we can follow and it can make our lives easier. The first one you might have heard of it is to combine iron-rich foods with vitamin C rich foods like kiwi, berries, citrus fruits, red bell pepper and by adding these to your meals you can increase iron absorption. For example, a study found that by adding vitamin C to maize and beet it increased iron absorption by up to 84% which is huge. But also remember that vitamin C can be destroyed by heat so make sure to add vitamin C rich foods after you cook your meal. For example, you can add some lime and lemon juice to your lentil curry or some raw bell pepper into your wraps and tacos. You can also top your oatmeal with some berries and kiwi. So there are not only iron enhancers but also iron inhibitors and these are the phytochemicals found in plants. So what are phytochemicals? Well, it's in their name, phyto means plants, so plant chemicals, and these are essentially protecting the plants. These are found really healthy for us and it has many benefits, however they can also inhibit some nutrient absorption like iron. One of the most common phytochemicals uh, found in plants that inhibit iron absorption is phytates. However, a study found that by adding vitamin C to these foods you can counteract the inhibiting effects. But there are also other ways to counteract these effects. 
The first one is to soak your beans, peas, lentils, nuts and seeds. You can soak them overnight and rinse them before cooking or eating them and this way you can make sure that the iron absorption rate is way higher than otherwise. And another great way to decrease these inhibiting effects is to enjoy some sprouted lentils and beans. These are really healthy and they are way more bioavailable in iron. Coffee and tea also has phytochemicals, more specifically tannins, and these can also inhibit iron absorption, so make sure to drink your coffee and tea separately from your meals, at least 30 minutes to an hour before or after your meals and supplements. And lastly, one more inhibitor can be surprisingly calcium supplements, because calcium can inhibit iron absorption as well. Just make sure if you have to take calcium supplements, take them separately from your meals and other supplements, especially iron supplements, and that way you can make sure it doesn't cause any inhibiting effects. These simple steps, which are very easy to follow, I think, can have a really big impact on how much iron we can absorb, and this way we can make sure we are on the right track. So how do we actually know if we have iron deficiency? I always love to say that listen to your body because our body is really good at communicating to us. There can be many signs of iron deficiency. However, these symptoms can also be a sign of other deficiencies or diseases and it's really good to detect these deficiencies or problems in time because that way we can actually do something about them before we get ill or we have more serious problems. So if you experience any of these, again, I highly recommend you to talk to a medical professional and get a blood work done. The symptoms of iron deficiency are usually brittle nails, fatigue, reduced capacity to do physical work and activity, reduced endurance capacity, shortness of breath, difficulty to sleep and stay asleep, and impaired immune system. So for example, if you are ill frequently, it might be because your iron levels are lower than they should be. Now I know it might be really tempting to solve this whole thing with some iron supplements. And while these can be helpful for those who have anemia, I always like to go for food first. Because iron overload is dangerous and we want to avoid that. So if you think you need iron supplements, again, talk to your doctor. So that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for spending some time with me and I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you like this type of video because I would love to make more of these. And yeah, I will see you guys very soon. Sending you so much love and sunshine. And thank you for watching. Bye!